Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something that is way outside of what I normally talk about. It is milkweed. Usually, on this farm, we are using. We use the soil to make corn. We use the deer to make ground meat and sausage. We use fish. We use everything that we use, the garden, we use it. We often give back to the soil so that we can use from it. But in this case, we're giving back to something that we really don't get much out of except for seeing them, and that is butterflies. This is milkweed. We left this patch of milkweed because we believe in giving back. And we believe in nature. We believe in God's nature he gave us. And butterflies are not the only pollinator that utilize these plants. There's also bees, moths, different wide varieties, things that we don't really like. Sometimes wasps even use it. I'm pretty sure hummingbirds come in here. I watched and didn't see any, but I'm pretty sure they utilize this. But the number one species that benefits from this is the monarch butterfly for this reason. Not only do they need the nectar as butterflies, but as the caterpillar. Did you know milkweed is the only thing they can eat? The leaf of the milkweed is the only thing that they can eat. I find that to be pretty amazing. Now there are 73 types of milkweed in the United States alone. 30 of those the monarch butterfly regularly uses as a host plant for its young. It lays its eggs there, they come in and they eat. We have them here, monarch butterflies. There's also other kind of butterflies that also benefit from these and you'll find it to be pretty amazing. Now you'll hear behind me, there's a host of birds that are around this area, including the bobwhite quail, which are highly prized by naturalists of all kinds. The swallows fly around and eat the bugs that fly up out of here. So all in all, this is an amazing thing to do. How hard is it? to just mow around a section and let it grow. Not hard at all. If you have some property and you see some milkweed growing on it, take the time, just give it a few months to do its thing. You can mow it down later whenever the pods turn dry and make their seeds. When this is all finished making it what it's gonna do and the butterflies have done their thing and have left, we'll mow it because in Tennessee, trees take over and before long, you wouldn't even have any milkweed. So it is important to mow, just when to mow, to not destroy a lot of butterfly eggs and larva. That's what you don't want to destroy. But for now, what kind of a sacrifice is it for me to leave a little bit of milkweed on my place for the butterflies? No sacrifice at all. So we find it to be enjoyable and we would like to recommend it for you. If it's something you can do, do it. It'll make you happy to see them butterflies. I see a yellow one going that way right now. You might notice behind me, there is a number of monarchs as well as the big, big yellow ones. I don't know the name of those. And they're all working right here along with some bees and some different things. It is absolutely amazing Scientists have known for many years the process of the metamorphosis, the chrysalis. It wasn't until the 1970s that they figured out what happened to them in the wintertime. They tracked them and discovered that they flew down to central Mexico, and a lot of them had flown over 2,500 miles in their short little lives. That is just absolutely amazing. There's a few of them right there. When these caterpillars eat this milkweed leaf, what they are doing is protecting themselves for the rest of their lives. Even as a butterfly, that never leaves them. That milkweed leaf is so bitter and, that, and it's toxic according to what I read. It sticks with them and all a bird has to do is eat one of them and he's finished with that for life. He will not ever eat another one. There's two different kinds of yellow butterflies right there on the same plant. These butterflies also, I think it's very interesting, only taste with their feet. They have sensory hairs on their feet and on their legs that taste. Their tongue doesn't taste, but it grabs the nectar and brings it in. 
That's interesting. We all know that the butterfly sheds its skin once when it becomes a butterfly, when it goes from the pupa stage to the butterfly stage. But in all actuality, the monarch butterfly sheds its skin five times in its life. Another fun fact, monarch butterflies have been observed to fly over 650 miles without landing. That is amazing. One reason they can do that is because 80% of the food they consume is turned into fat, which makes up one third of their dry body weight. I think I might be a butterfly. I think that's what happens to my food. Hmm. So I hope that you can use this information to benefit yourself and others, but that's all we've got for you today. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.